So EMG Wiz is a web-based EMG tutorial. EMG is a diagnostic test that's performed by mostly neurologists and physiatrists to help diagnose diseases or disorders of the peripheral nervous system. And it's a test that actually requires a fair amount of uh, interactivity with the results of the test. And what I mean by that is when people are performing this test on a patient, they're examining nerves and muscles. And there are actually dozens of nerves, actually hundreds of nerves and muscles that you can look at in the body. And the results of the individual nerves that you look at may have some bearing on what you look at next. So you may examine a patient and think that you could get the answer by looking at one or two nerves and then study those nerves, use that data, um, and you might not actually be able to answer the question or that might send you down a different pathway. So it is a dynamic process. And as a dynamic process, EMG is sort of unique in medicine. So the purpose of EMG Wiz was to create uh, an, an interactive training program that would sort of simulate the dynamic nature of this test. Uh, so essentially, it's case-based. It'll provide a little bit of clinical information. And then the trainee has to decide which nerves and which muscles to study. They request them, and EMG Wiz, EMG Wiz uh, provides data, provides the answers for what they request. And then they have to use that information to decide, do I have enough information to make the diagnosis, to rule in uh, the correct diagnosis and rule out competing diagnoses, or do I have to look further? And they essentially get to keep going, asking for more information until they feel like they have enough information. And then when it's done, they say, okay, I'm going to solve the puzzle. This is what I think this fake patient has. Uh, and then EMG Wiz provides feedback about whether they basically did enough studies to rule in the correct diagnosis and rule out all of the competing diagnoses. Do they, is it, is it based on actual cases? Or are they it, it's based on, it's not based on actual cases of real patients. It's based on theoretical cases. Um, and what we would expect the EMG data to look like in those cases. But there actually is an element of randomization to it as well. Um, the data for part of an EMG, what we call nerve conduction studies, is numeric. Um, if you look at a, a nerve in the hand, say the median nerve, it'll tell you um, what we call the amplitude of the response and the latency of the response and the conduction velocity. Those are basically different pieces of data that have to do with the integrity of that nerve. And we have normal ranges for those that we know. And so um, essentially, instead of just saying this is normal or abnormal, it'll actually give you values. And those values will be randomized either within the normal range or an abnormal range, depending on the case. Uh, and so I've sort of built up these cases that will allow essentially um, a case of a given diagnosis, like damage to that median nerve, there's actually millions of ways that that could look like on the EMG Wiz, so you'll never see the same case twice. There are probably about a hundred different diagnoses that people have to learn how to recognize to be competent at doing EMG. And a lot of it, most people learn by experience. Um, if a trainee is with us for a couple of months, they may have an opportunity to see you know, 60 different studies, half of those are going to end up being normal and half of them are going to be abnormal and of those abnormal ones, a lot of them are going to be these really common things. But to go out into the world and be able to practice this by yourself, you have to be able to recognize the common and uncommon things. So one of the great things about EMG Wiz is it provides cases of both. And so our students, um, I wouldn't say it's helping them get better at recognizing normal or get better at recognizing the really common things necessarily. But there's this huge volume of uncommon diagnoses that they may not have an opportunity to see or think about too much while they're in their training. And I think that's really where EMG Wiz takes the place of, of personal experience. And the only other way that you can learn that, to, to recognize those uncommon things, is really from textbooks. And there are actually, uh, that's how I learned when I was doing this. And I, I had personal experience and I supplemented by reading books full of cases of all these different diagnoses and saying, okay, I guess I understand why that would be different. But when you read it in a textbook, it takes away the interactivity. It takes away that dynamic nature of having to figure out, well, what, what nerves am I going to look at? You know, a textbook, it presents all the information for you and you can think about it before you turn the page and see what the actual answer is. But you don't get to pick the test yourself. And I think that's where EMG Wiz is really unique.
So this is the home page for EMG Wiz. There are several ways to choose cases. You can choose them randomly. You can choose by chief complaint, such as a patient with foot drop or a patient with upper extremity numbness. Um, you can choose by a specific diagnosis. That's not something you're going to probably do too often, but this shows you all the different diagnoses that EMG Wiz has. Or you can do modules, and this is what I actually recommend for our trainees. I'll pick one of these randomly here. And it provides clinical information and then asks you to come up with a differential diagnosis. And this is the part where you ask for the data that you want. So you pick the side, you can choose different types of nerves, and then the nerves themselves. Now, of course, you don't necessarily know if these numbers are normal. If you haven't seen this before, I can tell you these uh, actually have some abnormalities. Actually, if you hold the mouse over this, it'll tell you what the normal range is for each of these values. So this is supposed to be 10 or higher, and it's down to 1.7. You can also click on Highlight Abnormal Values, and it'll highlight it for you. So now I have this piece of information, and I have to decide what to do with it. Um, I think in this case, there, uh, uh, this still could be related to my initial suspicion of an ulnar mononeuropathy at the elbow. And the way that I would prove that would be to look at an ulnar motor response at the wrist below the elbow and above the elbow. And if my diagnostic suspicion was correct, what I would expect to see is that this number would be much lower. It would show slowing across the elbow. So this is a classic example of I, I come in thinking I know what's going on, and then the data that I get it surprises me. It's showing me something unexpected. And now I have to come back and think about, well, what would I do in this situation? And this is what's sort of unique about EMG Wiz. This is real life. This is what happens all the time when you're doing EMGs. You get unexpected information, and you have to decide what does it mean? Where do I go from there?